Today I'm going to talk about when distributed database meets cloud lessons learned because during the past years that we have done a lot of work in this field and we notice that when we do a lot of things on the traditional database because of a lot of tra uh, limitations and the restrictions, they couldn't be uploaded to the cloud directly. For instance, some of the statistics are static. But in, on the cloud, all those data are dynamic. So we need DBA in the traditional database. But in the cloud, we can do a lot of auto tuning. And uh, so today I'm going to share with you how can we use container and. Uh, other technologies to transform the traditional database into cloud and how to use, use the cloud database and also some lessons learned during the process. So, just a brief self introduction. My name is Wang Yanting. I work in Pivotal and I'm principal software engineering. So, now I'm also Apache HAWQ committee and I'm also a member of the Apache HAWQ PMC. So, I would like to firstly talk about, about something about the Apache AWQ project and also what are the new requirements from the database on the cloud and how did we meet the requirements and also some lessons we've learned and the last session, that's the part where we uh, did the Q&A. Uh, about the Apache Hawk, so we can use a lot of keywords to describe it, including native, advanced, MVP, Elastic Query Engine. So as have nat so we use Hadoop native is because we follow the best practices and a lot of Hadoop practices that we use can coexist in one system and also advanced because Hawk use servo interface and uh, they use Metalib, some to learn some advanced functions, and also the Metalib is the way that it used to do the query. So it is more efficient. And uh, also the Elastic Query Engine is related. So it means that the more we do, we do the query, the more efficient it is. So it is unlike the traditional database. But Hawk can actually conduct the query under any circumstance. So, so we use Hawk as the example because it's actually has graduated from the Apache, is now a graduate and top level project. So I hope that you can like pay more attention to this project in the future. So this is the structure of the Hawk. So it's based on the Hadoop query system. So it's also a classic master and a segment system. So they have their, so for the master, they have their own standby segments. So for Hawk, so when you have edge base, so they can coexist in one system and all the resources will not affect each other. And uh, so when we use physical segment, they will not belong to node management and uh, master, sent by master, name node management, they can be deployed separately. And also the master, they have two different functions. So, for instance, they can be responsible for the transaction manager, to be responsible for the data, and uh, also to also the statistic. And uh, the second usage is that respond to the query from the users. So they can have parallel query from the resources manager. And you can have those resources from the query. 
So these will depend on the complexity of the priory and also the data involved in the priory. So the more complex the priory is, the more data there is, and the more resources we will have. So when the quarry have the when we have the quarry, so there will be have a dispatcher or a QD, they will be responsible for allocating all the resources to the segments involved. And all the segments based on the resources allocation will have these QE or query executor. And afterwards, they will send back the feedback or the results to the master and the send back to the users. So because all the user data, uh, and actually they're not stored in the hog. So the design purpose is about stateless and we can scale up at any moment. And the hog, so there be can be scaled up in milliseconds. And so for anyone who is familiar with this process, so it has to like constantly scale up. So how can we achieve these stateless segment? So actually during the process, once we send out the information, they will not be changed and uh, all this information will be stored in the master and uh, those will be dispatched to the segment and all those query information will simultaneously send to the segment. So also, in addition to being stateless, they are quite efficient. So for the distributed database, one tricky part is that how to manage these high-speed or efficient data transfer when issues are quite complicated. So for instance, so the parser have to write a QE procedure and uh, connect to other QE procedures. So because of these Internet, we, if you use PCBC Proco, and uh, the resources will be exempt, and uh, because of this scalability issue, we now use UDP, and we have this verification and those mechanisms. So during the same time, we can lower the burden of the system and achieve a maximum scalability. And now, this the how, how Hawk process the query. So we can see the joy here. So, one, so we have these different... So through the parser and the optimizer, so you can see the plot here. So because the is a distributed database, so actually you can just understand. So maybe it can be viewed as a, like a collaboration system. So this is the parallelism of a query that can be processed dynamically. So the parallelism is not restricted by the physical features of the database, but it's quite a dynamic query process. So it will be then sent to the manager and it will look into the status of the system. So resource manager, if the parallelism is n and uh, it will decide that n is the appropriate amount and then it will send it to the segment and uh, to decide the number as n and uh, on each segment you will have this virtual database. So this virtual segment is what, how we call these segments and also we have a physical segment. So you can actually understand it this way. So from this basic level, we have several numbers like n parallelism and uh, virtual segments. So we can look at this parallel query after allocation. If you have a virtual segments, they only be responsible for several parts, the certain parts of the query. So this model can work on the scan nodes and uh, in terms of the QE procedure in the process, they will not interfere with each other and they have different 
We have to look at the overall data and you need the motion of the data. And then Hawk has uh, this motion procedure. So the motion node can process different QE procedure to support joy and uh, the combination of knots. So we have three different motions, including redistribution. So the first one is redistribution. You re re reallocate the keys and uh, you send the, to the upper layer, upper layer nodes and uh, to redistribute, redistribute it and to connect all the data on the segment nodes to the master nodes. And also, if you include motion procedure, it cannot be done independently by a QE procedure. So we we'll have to slice the query and this can be done independently by a QE. And also through motion that we can call this a virtual segment a slice. So if a virtual segment needs to deal with several different slices, you will have to run different QE procedures and each one is a slice. So for each query, the, so for instance, the one on the screen includes three slices. So slice will take place in the motion knot, so it will be turned into two slices. So the more motion you have, the more slices you have, and the, the more procedures or, that you will have in the virtual segment. So at the motion node, you can see that the segment is six, so that's the number of the virtual segments. So now you can see that have a closer look at the virtual segment and uh, the relationship between the virtual segment and uh, the data allocation. So we can actually divide it into six parts and uh, each one of, a, one of them is one sixth. So each of them has a motion query and uh, that is a thunder, mo thunder motion, motion. So it presses the data and uh, redistribute it to the slice. And those are the receiver motion. And uh, they receive the data from the slicer. And uh, that slice zero is where we have the gather motion receiver. And, re and we send the data back to the users. So now a short summary. So it's a, actually a resource allocation unit, and it's also kind of like similar to a container, but it's also a logic concept. So a virtual segment is also a segment for execution. So physically, it's kind of like a, things that you can determine that based on the complexity complexity of the database and it's based on the physical segment so a short summary of the Apache Hawk so it's the performance is high and because of this parallel or separated system, it's more flexible and elastic and it has a Lusk query execution engine with this stateless segment. So with those features, so we can say that we use this hook to transfer the traditional database into a cloud database. Let's talk about the cloud database. Comparing with the um, traditional IP pool, it has new requirements. First of all, traditionally, we have this um, cluster for one cluster for one database and multiple for multiple clusters. But it should be isolated. We do not, it does not need to share the resources. And service has made our cloud database more agility because we can have um, shareable, in, shareable resources and to make up its application. And if we can increase the usability, we can lower the cost for customers. And this, we need to think about more on the managing of the system. Uh, hopefully, that we uh, our cloud database is suitable for different different types of operating environment, including our private cloud, public cloud. Because if it's a public cloud, we cannot offer each client a different DBA. So we need to try to achieve DBA free. 
As for the last two requirements, the deployment and DevOps, we need to consider them together. And our solution is container. Container is a little bit. We need to seek for the their differences because under the container environment, then we do not need to consider a lot of the, uh, for instance, the operating system. That includes our private cloud and public cloud. It's all the same issues that we need to solve. And co comparing with VMs, VMs is basically for facing machines and containers are for apps. Containers is more friendly for the DevOps of apps. For a good container, it needs to have a good platform, and under that, Kubernetes, it's a good solution. It not only offers a lot of solutions, it but also it offers connection points, including service discovery, load balancing, and horizontal and vertical auto scaling, rolling upgrade. At the same time, Kubernetes is very good at monitor and metric collections. It offers a lot of solutions in it. If you see this chart up here, it, this is our upgrade version based on Apache Hawk. So this is for cloud database. There are more, two basic characteristics. One is the service structure. One is storage and one is computing, and also this is a deep integration of our database, and easy are DevOps. Because on clouds, we have more, the storage are, are more like S3 storage, at the same time, we don't need to do DevOps ourselves. If this is remote, we need to only need to get a new pouch. As for computing, it is the resource management service. Because it's for facing a multiple cluster, we need to have the optimization of our resource managing. So we can get all the Segnum resource and to offer them service. Also, we have a new management layer for storage. It is for managing all the segment resourcing here. When master is, is having queuing operation, then you can distribute the right amount of segment resource for master. After master finished queuing, acquiring, the resource will go back to our master. So what is the segments here? Because in Hawk, there is no container. The container, they are limited. The size of the resource, the size of the resource is alignment with the size of container. Different query requires different resource, therefore, different segment has different paramedics. So we will form segment, we will pull all the segment pools together and to form a segment pool. So from group to pool. And according to the characteristics of query, they will find the most relative resource that can be allocated. And next, maybe we'll talk later about the process. After we have the computing service, then the storage service will become easier. Because now our customers only need to set up a master nodes here, and you can f and you can solve all the pr problems. Nowadays, we don't have clusters, but we can still achieve the effect of building up a cluster. And because of these queries, we can allocate the right resource to the right segment group. And finally, is our control panel. After we containerize our data, we need a lot of controller and parameters for DevOps. This element 
is like the integration and automation BBA of our controls under the structure. This is basically based on cloud control. Basically, everything is for Kubernetes to do the DevOps. So, this we have talked about it. This graph over here is how do we look into the DevOps Kubernetes on Hawk? The blue one is the Hawk's component. We use all the segment of the crew to the customer's resource. Within that pool, there are different segments, and segments are in the pods. And we use devil sites for DevOps. The reason why we use devil site is that it's easier for analysis later on. And also they offer segment parts a more stabilized environment. So these are really helpful for our DevOps because segment pools are CRZ and we have the allocated the right controller to focus on the different circumstances. As for the Hawk Master and Standby Master, because these two components, they are locally state, so they do have the um, so they do have the status, and we've added on the PVs for these nodes. One is master and one is standby master. And prior to that, there's a service to offer our customers an unchangeable address. And we have made it a hot cluster CRD for hot operator will do the DevOps. So only thing they need to do is to maintain the cloud master to establish the Hawk pool. Operator need to monitor the cluster. If the master is error and it cannot be solved by restart, then the Hawk master will automatically fires the standby. And this operation is seenable by our users. And our users can visit this by through CMD. The last part of Hawk is the resource manager. That is, we can have a request for resource management that is called the query CRD. So the pool can require for resources and the managing of the resource is for query controller is in charge of that. Query controller will fire a new control CRD to search for the queries resource that they need. If there is no right resource, then it can wait or trigger the hot pools, scaling up mechanism. After finding the right resource, the address will be right under the query CRD and be fired. After the resource is allocated, it will update its status information. And that under the process, the query controller will also monitor its current situation. Will it be out of memory or out of disk situation? It will be monitored. And that event will be recorded into query CRD and it will be recorded as history log for an elastic and optimization. So besides all these, you can see the yellow part are the basic service provided by Kubernetes, including Love, Prometheus for monitoring, and the result of monitoring can be seen by Grafna dashboard. So all these basic service can be really helpful for DevOps. There are metrics, there are logs, and their events, all these can be collected and recorded. The both out of scale will according to this information to decide when to scale up or when to scale down. The resource recommender will rely on the event to choose the right status for the pod, the size of the pod. So it will learn from experience. If there is a query out of memory or failure, next time it will recommend to fix the paramedics of a pod. 
or to use a second group to satisfy the needs. And this is for query and recommender. This we've spent a lot of time to do other optimizations, including how do we decide whether the query size and the analysis of metrics and the algorithms. How do we use our current system to use a closed circle of it? So I will not go into that. We have integrated many commands to CRD over here. So there are most important CRD. As you can see, the hot clusters CRD, it's a cluster oriented, the cluster pod and the user docs, including the user matching situation and the master result limit and standby result limit is for master nodes and standby master nodes combination. The query CRD is a, as, is a requirement for the resource, including the basic information of queries, including where does this query belongs to, which user unit. And the request info is the description of what this query, what kind of segment does it need. After the relocation of the segment resource, it will add up the address information of the segment nodes and the query will use this information and to check out whether the query is successful. And on the very right hand side is the pool of CRD. The first one is group, the group information. They have different type of resource allocation, including CPU, memory, and some other resources that in it. And under that, you can see the resource competitiveness. That is the main resource that we have. The total resource we have, it will be updated real time. And these controllers are used under the DevOps Hawks and optimization. We have talked about this prior. And this graph you can see is the cloud-based hawk comparing with the traditional. Basically, it's all the same. It is how do we get the situation that's a different point under the traditional method. We need to acquire image from the ER. And now the um, resources from our containers. So what I've talked about is how do we do the um, integration and to manage the resource relocation, how do we get Hawk into a cloud database? And under that, we have a lot of issues. When we started, we think that if we put this into image, into containers, like service, like province, like stable site, well, that, that should be enough. But as we go deeper, we find out that this is not sufficient. The database requires more than these. It needs a lot of change to become a cloud database. And following are my summing ups. First of all, it's about the architecture. Traditionally, we have this monolithic structure. We have this app for all the resources because performance is the priority. So this is not agile enough for service providing structure or resource managing providing. The same resource to combine a service is more easier for the sharing of the resource and to increase the usability of our resource. Because nowadays we can just go through in through APIs and duck points. Because it's connected for service operation and our DB needs these resources. So different components can have easier to be compatible by Kubernetes. For instance, like pods, stable side, it can become a customer's resource. So we need to define some controller to control these resources. 
If we isolate them, we can have a lot of advantage. DB only needs to consider the resource, enough resource. It does not need to consider how to manage this resource, so scaling up, scaling down, just hand them to Kubernetes is enough. Next is about containerization. If we talk about DB containerization, it's not just being Docker image. We know that we need to define our CPU resources for containers. So how much is the right volume? This is a difficult question to be answered because if we do not put limitage in our resource or just to use it as default, it, we can easily use our container as a VM. So the optimization of our resource is low and it will be hard for us to decentralize. According to our understanding, we think that container is actually a needs a right, right amount of resource, and that right amount needs to be defined. For instance, Vibesora can be easily defined what is the right amount. Other applications, other applications might be difficult, because Hawk is defined mostly is based on um, the physical machines. Different logic segments is like a container. It has CPU manager, and the difference is, is that it is a logical concept. If the resource it needs does not surpass the limitation of the machine, then it can be run. So then it can be relocated the right resources that it need. The allocation of the resources is defined based on container. Because the container resource cannot be it's not shareable so we need to define the right amount and this we can prevent failures agility is low if we have a high efficiency on query it can make our running of querying execution failure after continuation, we can see the resource management. As we said, that traditional database is based on fixed resources. So based on the fixed resource, how do we allocate the resource on different queries? It's based on beta Q or resource group. In cloud database, we can have this dynamic resources. We do not need to worry about the limitation of the resource. We only need to think about how do we maximize the resource sharing. And this is a lot of difference between the cloud and traditional database. Next, these are just monitoring tuning of our resource. We have a lot of, we spend a lot of time on talking about the um, resource, resource managing and research under container environment, how do we optimize our resource? Because the characteristic of DB, it is very hard to calculate how much resource that it actually needs. So different query requires different resource. Because we have these different queries, it requires different amount of data, so it requires different amount of resource. So we offer this model, and also we can do analysis to see the similarity of these queries and to manage the best resource usage. So we collect this, including hot runtime metrics, including application logs and Kubernetes events, to see the resource allocating situation and to monitor and to optimize them. Due to time limits, I want to talk about our final two points. So I would like to say that we need to make the best use of the Kubernetes ecosystem, and these are my experience. If we want to utilize a, the CMD, then we need to have better utilize it and the older structure. And finally, 
for pi priority based on the process because we have a lot of parts. If we do not use our pi part priority, the part can be fighting for their resources and can be a question. Oh, thank you. That'll be it. So do you use the documents for storage or anything else? So actually, so if you use distributed database, all those segments can be viewed as some be used together. So we have these table. So each one of them, when they scan, they will not cover. So there will not be interface. And then we need mobile data to get a more complete view. So that depends on so whether your document is based inside the container or it's on the cloud. So, but it's, if it's inside the container, then when it's lost, it's gone forever. So it's just a, a, a volume based on my own experience. Thank you.